Okay, hello again. We're back and we're going to talk about clinical reasoning and we're going to go through an example. Uh, and in this example, we're going to, of course, use our framework. And remember, our framework is a cycle of data gathering and hypothesis testing over and over and over again. And we get our data from many different sources until we're able to either uh, treat it, that means rule it in, trash it, which means rule it out, or test it further, meaning we need to gather more data. So let's start with that patient that we had from the first video. That's a, the gentleman who came in whose head was pounding. And our initial data uh, it was here. And this was what was recorded on the nurse's intake sheet. That it's a 27-year-old gentleman complaining that his head is pounding like someone's got a jackhammer to the back of it. And they checked a bunch of vital signs. So they checked his heart rate, 69 is normal. His respiratory rate, 20. His temperature and the amount of oxygen uh, saturation of his blood and obviously 100% is what is the best we could get and so we acquire the data part of acquiring data is knowing what data to get and we realize you know what one thing is missing here we need the blood pressure so we need to get some more data there so they do get us the blood pressure and we can see this 243 over 151 and that's pretty high so when we're going to interpret and organize our data we have to make sense of it we can know a couple of things this guy's complaining of a headache uh, he says it hurts like a jackhammer and his blood pressure is really high Okay, so now let's make some hypotheses. Given this information that we have, do we have any possible uh, uh, explanations for it? Well, we can make a couple of guesses. What's most probable? Well, migraines are, are a common cause of headaches, so it could be a migraine. What are things that would be a disaster if we missed them? Uh, it, you know, bleeding in the brain would be a disaster, or perhaps even a brain tumor, so we want to make sure it's not that. Uh, and then, you know, are there any other things? Let's, you know, if we use a systematic approach, we might also come up with an infection in the brain as something that we should consider. Now, I'm going to uh, give a caveat right here. This is a very abbreviated list here, and we would certainly be thinking of more things, but for the sake of this example, we're going to pretend that these are the ones we got. Okay, so this is our differential diagnosis at this point. It's migraines, bleeding in the brain, brain tumor, and infection in the brain. Okay, so now we're going to test the diagnosis. And of our differential that we had before, do any of them meet the thresholds to trash it, to treat it, or, or are they somewhere in the middle and require further testing? And right now, I don't have enough information to, to rule in or to rule out any of those diagnoses, so we need to keep going. And none of them are rising to the top as most likely at, at this point, so uh, let's keep going. So now we need to get information from another source, and we're going to get it from history. And we're going to acquire data. And there's some questions that you ask of everybody. Uh, there's a mnemonic that we have, O-P-Q-R-S-T. Uh, and so let's ask that. And so that's the onset, position, quality, radiation, severity, and timing. The pain's uh, started 30 minutes ago. It's in the back of the head. It's throbbing. It doesn't radiate anywhere. He ranks at 9 on a 10 scale, and it's constant. Uh, other questions you want to ask are going to be specific to the diagnosis that we were talking about. So remember, we need to ask some questions about migraines, uh, brain tumors, bleeding, etc. So let's do that. And we do. So migraines, he's never had any before. Bleeding, he didn't hit his head, but his dad has had a brain aneurysm before. Tumor, the left side feels weak, so that's something. And he's not had any infectious, any sick contacts. So now we make a problem list. Before we had on our problem list that his blood pressure was high, but we're also going to add that his family, someone in his family had an aneurysm, and he has unilateral, that's one-sided weakness. So you're going to see that we're going to start using some medical terms here. These are called semantic qualifiers, these uh, terms that help us characterize something better. And they're usually going to be things that are paired opposite. So the unilateral, the opposite of that is bilateral, both sides. Chronic means something that's been there for a while, and acute means something that just started. So we're going to word things in that way because it helps us. So at this point, we've interpreted and organized our data. We've made a problem list, and we've interpreted our history to know that we have this family history we worry about and this unilateral one-sided weakness. Now, do we want to add anything to our differential diagnosis at this point? Maybe right now we don't. Uh, uh, we, we're going to leave everything the way that it is. And then we're going to go to test diagnosis. Do any of our diagnoses with this new information uh, meet the threshold to either trash it or treat it? Uh, no, not really. Uh, is any, are any of them more likely than the others? Well, maybe the brain tumor is with that left-sided weakness or maybe the brain bleeding with that high blood pressure. So 
We need more information. Everything else is still in the tested uh, area. So let's go to our physical exam and gather more data. So on our physical exam, we tend to, for most patients, ask some things of everybody, and we, we look at how they look. We look in their ears and their eyes and their neck and their heart and their lungs and their belly, etc. But we know that with someone with a headache, we really need to do some good brain and nerve testing. We want to get some good detailed information there, so a neurologic example, exam is important. And so we do that. And now we're going to interpret and organize all that information and look at this. We got some things that were definitely abnormal. He was cross-eyed when he was looking to the side, and his left leg and arm were paralyzed, and he had some facial droop and garbled speech. All right, so now we've got to, we've got to uh, uh, interpret and organize this stuff. So we've got to add some new things to our problem list, right? We had a high blood pressure and left-sided weakness. The unilateral arm and leg weakness, we have to add that there. And this eye problem, which is from cranial nerve 6. So we've, we've got a lot of neurologic things on our problem list. Do we want to add anything new to our differential at this time? You know what? With uh, unilateral weakness and slurred speech, I forgot I need to put stroke on this list. So it could be a stroke. So we've got to add that to the, our list, which included before brain tumor, brain bleeding, migraines, and meningitis or a brain infection, right? So let's go on. Do any of these now meet the threshold to be, uh, to be trashed or to, to be treated? Uh, nothing really, but you know what? Stroke is looking really high probability with that left-sided weakness and migraines less so. And you know what? Meningitis, the brain infection without the fever and with that left-sided weakness, that usually doesn't happen. I'm starting to make, think that that's less, less probable, all right? So, but I still need more, I need more information here. So let's go and test a few more, okay? So we're going into testing. We need to acquire some data again. And so what was on our differential, that's what we use to help us make our, um, to know what we need to test and to look for stroke and brain bleeding and brain tumor. We need to get a CT scan. Uh, if we were worried about meningitis, we would probably also do a lumbar puncture, but I'm not so much worried about that now. So let's get that CAT scan. All right, so here is our CAT scan, and so let's interpret and organize it. Um, so uh, this is a brain, okay, and this gray stuff is brain matter, and you can see there's gray and white matter, which is uh, shown on here. But this stuff here, this white fluffy thing over here, that's blood. That's bleeding in the brain. Uh, so we have uh, intracranial hemorrhage and intracerebral, so that means brain in the bl uh, blood in the brain, blood in the head. Uh, to go on to our problem list now. Are we going to add anything new to our differential diagnosis? No, I don't think so. We've got this, this brain bleeding right here. And so now we're going to test. Do any of our diagnoses get, uh, meet the treatment threshold? Yeah, absolutely, right? Bleeding in the brain, in the brain, because we see it right there. That meet, meets it. And since this one is meeting this threshold, the other things like meningitis and migraines, and even non-bleeding stroke are going to probably fall into this trash thing here because there's so much evidence pointing to this that it's probably not this, right? So we've got something in our treatment threshold here. It's, it's crossed it, and so it was bleeding in the brain. So now it's time to start treatment. So we're calling our neurosurgeons down to see this patient. And so this was an example of how clinical reasoning works using our using our framework, and we're going to go through this in more and more detail using lots of different cases. So thank you for watching.